Now, I see we have five minutes left, and that was the end of our presentation. But anybody that knows Steve Howe, if you give me a stage, and I'm probably going to make Grayson panic right now, and probably RT, but I got five minutes. So if you know me, when I got things in here, I need to tell you. So I wanted to share two stories, and to me, they parallel each other. And this is no script. This is what I believe here. So the things that most of you have heard the Steve Howe story over the years, and, and I talk about as much as I can within that time. But if you ask me, Steve, hey, when was the first time that you, what, what was one of the first times that you actually were emotional, got upset, cried, etc.? I'll tell you when it was. I got rolled into this room, and they said, hey, Steve, we need to do this nerve conductive test on your legs. Didn't even know what that word was, but... Okay, so as she's explaining what she's going to do, she said, I'm going to take a whole bunch of needles and I'm going to put them in your toes, your knees, your thighs, etc. And as she's explaining it to me, I don't realize that she's already doing it. And she goes, okay, we're all done. And I said, but what do you mean? I didn't feel the needles. And she goes, and she holds my hand and she goes, I know. That's the problem. And I said, well, what does that mean to me? She goes, well, Steve, unfortunately, I'm not the doctor, but I do this every day. You're probably not going to walk again. And remember, you're 22 years old being told you're never going to walk again. Now, I had three choices to make that day. First one, I accept what I've been told. I feel sorry for myself. And I live out my life going, hey, this is the best that I'm going to be. Option two, I can live the status quo life and do everything they tell me to do, physio, massage, all these different things, and still, whatever my result is, it is. Or option three, I can believe that they don't make that decision. I do. I decide if I'm going to walk again. Not no doctor, not no damn tests, me. So you know what I chose? I chose door number three. And it wasn't like it happened overnight. It took me about three or four years to get vertical and not have every crutch and wheelchair on, the, on this planet to keep me going. But you know what I did? I did it. I freaking beat it. But you know what it started with? A belief. Believing myself that I control my destiny. So now I want to share a different story that parallels this one. I can't speak for everyone on G3, but I can tell you for sure me, and there's definitely a bunch of them as well, have never done a slip operation in their life. I know I definitely haven't. It was very foreign to me. But one of the things I heard when I got to that job was, hey, guess what? When we get to these slips, in 135 years, Q has never been able to do it without a recordable. No pressure. So when I heard that and the team is all knowing that, we again had three choices. We just accept whatever our results are and say, hey, we're already defeated because we've never been able to do it, so we live with what we get. We can do the status quo thing and say, hey, here's all our programs and initiatives and things in place. And again, let fate decide its fate. Or three. We believe. And under Adam Phipps and Jeremy Bing's leadership, our team as a whole believed that we could do that damn slip recordable free. So we took that belief, and the team created this flawless execution plan. Flawless. With that belief in every single step. Then they took that plan, and as a team... We went out there with the belief that we could do it. And for anyone that doesn't know how that story ends, we did our first ever Kiewit history slip form operation recordable free. Then we had to do our next one. There was five to go, or four more to go, sorry. 
We did the second one, and guess what we did? With that same belief and mindset, we did number two. Recordable free. But that wasn't good enough for Adam and Jeremy and our team. We said we should be able to do this incident free without even a damn scratch. And again, we all as a team had that belief into our planning, into our execution. And guess what happened? We did the third slip without a scratch, not a hurt. And to cap that story off, we did all five slips recordable free. Something that we couldn't even do for one. In 135 years, we did five, back to back to back. And you know what it started with, guys? A belief. A belief that we could do it. So now I'll tie this all together. Today, you're going to have a whole bunch of information given to you. More tools in the toolbox, lessons learned, experiences that we hope you don't go through. And each individual person in this room gets to make three choices on Monday when they go back to work. One, you do nothing with it. You keep doing what you do. Two, do the status quo. We throw a whole bunch of Kool-Aid down your throat and you just let fate be fate. Or four, or three, you believe. Individually believe that your operation can go incident free. That same belief that that discipline can go incident free. That job can go incident free. Believe that this district can go incident free. And more importantly, as a family, we can do this incident free if we all believe. But at the end of the day, you guys all make that choice. But I can stand here to be to say the first one in the district, I believe we can. Now it's up to you. So now I went over my time, but thank you. Now it's off my chest. <laughs>